Hürmetli hanımlar ve canavlar, hürmetli milletvekillerimiz, sefirler, diplomatlar ve hürmetli hemkarlar ve medya mensupları. İlk növbədə təşəkkürümü bildirmək istərdim Strateji Araşdırmalar Mərkəzinə bu cür aktual bir mövzuda, yəni Azərbaycan işgal olmuş ərazilərində qeyri-qanuni fəaliyyətlər mövzusunda bu konferansın və seminarın təşkil edilməsinə görə. Həmçinin də digər hörmətli həmkarlarımıza da təşəkkür etmək istərdim ki, onlar da bu paneldə bizimlə birlikdə çıxış edirlər. Həqiqətən də seminarın mövzusu çox aktualdır və çox vacibdir. Çünki Ermənistan tərəfindən Azərbaycana qarşı həyata keçirilən işğal və təcavüz siyasətinin tərkib hissəsi kimi Azərbaycan işğal olmuş ərazilərində qeyri-qanuni fəaliyyətlər həyata keçirilir. Və bu qeyri-qanuni fəaliyyətlər məqsəd yönlü və qərəzli xarakter daşıyaraq işğal olmuş ərazilərin anneksiyasını, yəni ilhaqı məqsədi daşıyır. Və nəticə itibarilə də qeyri-qanuni fəaliyyətlər nəticəsində Azərbaycanın işğal olunmuş ərazilərində yaradılan faqlar nəticə etibarilə münaqişənin həllində çox ciddi problemlər yaradır və Ermənistanın da əsr məqsədi və niyyəti ondan ibarətdir. Həmçinin Ermənistan tərəfi qeyri-qanuni fəaliyyətləri həyata keçirməklə mövcud status quo vəziyyətini saxlamaq kömü məqsədlər də güdür. İşğal olunmuş ərazilərimizdəki həyata keçirilən qeyri-qanuni fəaliyyətlərə biz baxsaq, bir neçə istiqaməti biz burada təsnif edə bilərik. Birincisi, Ən vacib problemlərdən biri ondan ibarətdir ki, işğal olunmuş ərazilərimizdə məqsəd yönlü məskunlaşma siyasətinə aparılması. Yəni, demografik vəziyyət məqsəd yönlü şəkildə dəyişdirilir. İkincisi, Azərbaycanın işğal olunmuş ərazilərində təbii sərvətlərin və xüsusilə də mineral resursların talan edilməsi. Qeyri-qanuni, qeyri-şəffaf və çirkli maliyyə və iqtisadi fəaliyyətlərin həyata keçirilməsi. Uh, holding different money laundering activities, uh, illegal banking services, then changing and exploiting the IT infrastructures or telecommunication infrastructures of Azerbaijan, then changing the cultural values and looting the cultural the heritage of Azerbaijan in the occupied territories and creating the different facts in the occupied territories. Then changing the specificities and characters of the architectural monuments in the occupied territories, making them to look like Armenian. Uh, Organizing illegal visits to the sports events organized in the occupied territories. So, as a result of this, the government of Armenia uh, has the aim to legitimize the occupation and aggression of the territory of Azerbaijan. So, the international law has direct responsibilities for such activities. And the, uh, the Republic of Armenia is the holder of this responsibility on the international arena in accordance with the international law. As for the topic discussed, illegal activities in the occupied territories of Azerbaijan responsibilities of third parties, I believe that we have to mention that a certain document has been uh, drafted uh, which is called Illegal Activities in the Occupied Territories of Azerbaijan and Responsibility of the Third Party is a document which has been disseminated across different national organizations, including UN. So, another point is about the demographic situation. As you know, Armenia resettles the the Syrians of Armenian origin and they are explo exploitating this subject and they resettle them in the direction of the occupied territories of Azerbaijan. The resettlement policy is carried out in the adjacent regions of Nagorno-Karabakh, Zangilan, Gubatli, where Armenians never lived in the compact manner. So, therefore, the claims of Armenia are groundless. The main aim of Armenia is annexation, is continuing occupation with the aim of annexation. I also would like to point out the following. Some organizations, including humanitarian ones, provide some humanitarian aid to the Syrians of 
Armenian origin. We have nothing to do with this. But Armenian, the Armenian side abuses this humanitarian aid and this humanitarian aid is used to the process of resettlement of the Syrians of Armenian origin onto occupied territory of Azerbaijan. We touched on the cultural heritage issue. We also have to indicate that the Azerbaijan in the UNESCO and the other organizations uh, has had the initiative of carrying out the monitoring on the occupied territory. Armenia has never uh, responded to it. Why? Because Azerbaijan has the necessary inventory of all the of, of all cultural heritage locations with the necessary data. For example, just lately, another legal activity was the building of a church in the Jabrail region. The never Armenians lived in the Jabrail region, so we understand what is the aim. And then, the activities under the slogan of humanitarian demining activity, but under this name, some other activities are carried out, and therefore, we would like to address to those countries and organizations who support them in this demining that it should be carried out this demining in the context of demining those territories that the refugees and IDPs of the Republic of Azerbaijan can come back uh, to those territories, but not that the uh, Armenians from other countries can be resettled to those territories once these territories have been demined. So another point is about exploitation of the mineral and loading of the mineral. Uh, uh, resources of Azerbaijan. As we know, especially for example in Africa, during the different conflicts, uh, the resources have been looted, and there are facts of this looting of these natural resources. Uh, the international community has a very interesting experience in this. But we, we can see the same scenario in the occupied territories of Azerbaijan. It's quite clear. The mineral resources are are exploited in our occupied territories. We have to mention gold, silver, and copper. They are uh, transported to Armenia, processed primarily, and then uh, exported to the international market. If we look at the exports of Armenia, we will see the precious metals, non-ferrous metals and precious metals, and where the a share of such resources from the occupied territory is great. So, under the name, uh, we would like also to mention the organization of OECD in the framework of OECD. There are very serious instructions on the export of the uh, illegal export of the resources from the occupied and risky territories, and such resources cannot be exploited. But there are some OECD countries, uh, the natural persons and legal entities of which come to the occupied territories of Azerbaijan, exploit those uh, mining uh, resources and export them to the other countries. Of course, we will have an opportunity, I believe, to discuss around all these topics, but I'd like to mention also the Minsk Group, uh, partner countries. Uh, yes, they announced many times on strengthening of the ceasefire and so on, but we also need to mentioned that illegal activities are those factors which impede building trust which the mass group partner countries call upon and therefore we need to call upon the hold and say no to illegal activities in the occupied territories and international organizations should understand that Azerbaijan will never tolerate their illegal activities in the occupied territories or their support of these uh, territories. This is uh, a direct threat to the situation. 
Uh, at the Dushanbe summit, uh, the president of, of the Republic of Azerbaijan Hanali, had some talks with the rest of the media, and Azerbaijani president uh, showed his uh, kind will uh, with regard uh, to his position on the ceasefire and negotiations. But nevertheless, we can witness that Armenia abuses our kind will and continues carrying out the legal activities in the occupied territories. For example, in media, we saw some news about the new road across the uh, bank of the Aras uh, River, there's some new settlements in Kalbaja region, and so on. There are some other issues, uh, issues of the mock up uh, uh, regime representatives who make visits to the Minsk group uh, co chair countries. We would like to mention that there are two communities of the Nagorno-Karabakh, the Armenian and Azerbaijani communities, and both communities have both the same legal status. If we look at the, from the uh, international human rights point of view, so uh, the visits cannot be carried out uh, in favor of one of the communities. There should be the equality of arms, but we don't say it, and lately, Bakosaokian, uh, the president of the mock-up, uh, the so-called mock-up uh, uh, Karabakh Republic, he uh, made a visit to France and by violating uh, legal norms and principles, taking into account the factor of the use of the armed forces, the policy of uh, sanctions towards such people should be carried out, but we see on the contrary that uh, the international community closes its eyes on this. So I would like also to uh, welcome here Mr. Mario Rafael. Uh, he was in Azerbaijan in a very hard time of Azerbaijan, and then he finished his mandate and left Azerbaijan. And he returned after 25 years in a very happy time of Azerbaijan. I think he, he can see that this Azerbaijan is not Azerbaijan of 25 years. And he can see the potential and the force of Azerbaijan. It is not the same Azerbaijan as it was 25 years ago. And all the participants of this panel, maybe they were really dozens uh, 25 years ago. We, we really had a lot of hopes for the conflict to be finished as soon as possible, um, but 25 years have passed, but the conflict has not been solved. The Minsk Group, OC Minsk Group is there, but its activities are, have no effect. So we want, we want justice in this process, the principle of justice to be inherent in any discussion. Ceasefire is not a peace and cannot be a peace. Ceasefire is a condition for achieving the peace. Unfortunately, for the period of 25 years, Armenia being hidden behind the ceasefire does not allow for the peace to come and carries out the policy of annexation of the occupied territories of Azerbaijan. Mr. Mario Afrani, as one of the of the Conference for Security and Cooperation in Europe, made a conference, so uh, he carried out his activities and had a lot of speeches, and he made one quote, uh, he quoted, I would like to quote him, uh, uh, on the occupation of the Agdam region, which he uh, mentioned in one of his speeches, and then the plan of immediate actions for the liberation of the territories was drafted, where even months, a certain period of time, uh, was discussed to be given to Armenia to liberate, to liberate the occupied territories. We believe, we hope, the Minsk co-chairs of today should learn your experience, should learn from you. Maybe we need to organize the round table with them and teach them that what Azerbaijan needs is justice, the international norms and principles. This, this is what Azerbaijan wants. 
I would like to again have a talk on the policy mess uh, with torture countries and uh, other countries and uh, ask them uh, to stop, uh, to take more serious actions to stop legal activities of their natural persons and legal entities of their countries in the occupied territories of Azerbaijan. And Azerbaijan will continue using the international norms and principles of international law. We have the representative of the uh, chief prosecution, so there are uh, criminal cases which have been open. He will speak about it, I believe. So this concept of illegal activities on the occupied territories of Azerbaijan should be further discussed and uh, should be informed to the international community. Uh, I should be discussed the, in the framework of the different events in, in the international organizations for the international community to be more aware of this.